Hi there, I'm Alex Teal. I developed UARM Creator Studio, and in this portion of the video tutorial, we'll be covering the logic and programming side of things in this software. So let's start this off by discussing uh, what UARM Creator Studio really is. So it was built completely in Python, and what it is is a visual programming language hybrid with Python. So if you use this software, you can go 100% programming in Python, or you can 100% program it uh, using just the visual programming side of things. So that means it scales well from beginners all the way to experts. And if you're looking to learn Python, this is a pretty good way to start. So in this tutorial, I won't be teaching how to program from scratch. I'll be showing you how to program specifically within the visual programming side of things here. So let's start off by um, creating some variables. So go ahead and click the logic tab down here and drag in the first command, the one that says set. So in your own Creator Studio, you can create variables and set them to um, various types, like numbers, strings, any Python type, in fact. And um, you can use them later on. The idea for this is to get rid of all the syntax so it's less complicated for beginners. So what a variable is, is essentially a way to hold a value. So we could put any, anything here under variable name, such as, let's say, um, test value. And in, under expression, you could put a number, you could put a string, you could put a Python list. Um, but for now, we're gonna stick to just numbers because they're easier to work with. Go ahead and set test value to 0.0. .0. Click apply, and now you have a variable called test value that you can use later on in your program. So you might be wondering what a variable can be used for. So in uh, your own Creator Studio, you can test variables like you would in other programming languages. A uh, test is effectively an if statement. So click and drag the second command here that says test. And here we can test the value of the variable we created called test value. Okay? And so the way this would work is say you would type in test value under the first expression and you would see if it is equal to another value. So if we put test value is equal to, say, 5. Click Apply, and you'll notice that two brackets pop up. Now, I'm going to put some code in here. These are just wait commands, OK? You'll notice um, that these commands are indented. They're slightly higher up than the other commands. That's because this code belongs to this test so if this is not true, then the, the program will continue down here. If this evaluates to a true statement, then it will run the code inside of here. And we can test that. We'll, we'll try running this. And you notice nothing happens. That's because test value is equal to 0, not 5. If we put 0 here and we run it again, this will run. Let's do that. And you can see quite clearly that the code is running because test value is in fact equal to zero. Now this isn't inherently useful until you change the value of test value at some point in the program. So let me show you an example of that. Click add event, step. Now copy paste this test value into the step event. You can use control C to copy and control V to paste and delete it. So you can see here under initialization, we set value uh, we set the variable to 0, 0.0. And under step, which means it will constantly be checking, it will be checking if test value is equal to 5. And since this will never be true, we need to add something that will cause it to be true. So click add event, keyboard, letters, A. So here under this event, we will set the variable to 5, test value. Actually, no, we'll set it to itself plus 1. So this means we will have to press the letter A five times before this code runs. And for the sake of having something happen, we'll have the robot beep. So if I press start, nothing happens because test value is not equal to five, it's equal to zero. But if I press A, one, two, three, four, and let's go to step five, the code will run every time because test value is currently equal to five. And let's press A one more time and hold it. 
and now it doesn't run because test value is equal to six. So these are the basics of um, variables in uh, UARM Creator Studio. You can get more creative with it if you know more about Python. Now you might be wondering what happens if you do something invalid under the variables. So let's say we never create test value. So I'll delete initialization and I'll also delete this. So here under step, it'll be checking if test value is equal to five, but that variable doesn't exist. When I press start, an error occurs and it's telling me that a na name error in expression test value equal, equal to five. Test value is not defined and it even highlights which event and which command had the error. So if you see one of these, it should be fairly easy to debug. Now, as a side note, just like in other programming languages, there are else statements. So these are statements that only occur when the test is false. So click and drag the else command down to here and you'll see some brackets pop up. And let's put some code into here. So you'll notice when I run this, let's make sure we add the test value back. You'll notice when I run this, that this will not run, but this will. And there you have it. Now, there are many other types of tests that you can use in UARM Creator Studio. For example, if you click on the vision tab, you'll notice that there are three tests. You can test if an object, a vision object has been seen. You can test if a vision object is in a certain location on the screen. And you can test the angle that an object is currently making against the robot's x-axis. And all of these can be used to trigger code. And just like other languages, again, you have while loops. Click and drag the third command under logic, and you'll notice that you can run a loop while a certain test is true. So for expression one, put test value, and for expression two, uh, put 0, 0.0. So now it'll test and run this code while test value is equal to zero. And press start. And you can see that it is in fact looping. Now you can use this to count upwards to a certain value. Maybe you want the robot to do something a certain amount of times. So make a variable called count. And while count is less than the amount of times you want it to run, say three times, then this code will run. Now, um, make sure you increment count up by one at the end of each uh, run of code. So count equals count plus one. Now run it, and this code will run three times. There you have it. The special feature to while loops, however, is that you don't have to use them just to test variables. If you open the while loop, you can see you can test other things. For example, you could run this code as long as a certain object is seen. You could run this code as long as a certain object is within this area. Um, you're, you're not limited. You could run it while an object is in a certain angle. Before I go on to explaining functions, I wanted to talk about two more commands, uh, the exit current event command and the exit program command. So exit current event, what it does is it exits the current event. Seems kind of obvious, but what that means is, say you have code running before and after this command. You'll notice that the code after it doesn't actually run. That's because it's exiting. It's no longer running the initialization event. Um, this might seem useless uh, until you realize that you can put it inside of an if statement and exit the event um, if certain parameters are met and not continue running. So that's quite useful. Or let's say you're debugging and you don't want to run the current event. Um, you just put that at the top and it won't run anything there. Um, the exit, t uh, the end task command. Now this is the only way to end the task other than pr uh, pressing the button right here. You can use it for emergency stops or you can use it inside of functions and that's something I'll talk about later. But for example, let's say I put an event called key press A and I, I uh, run the program and you'll notice everything is grayed out, the program is currently running until I press the A right now. So it's back. So that's what the end task does. It ends the currently running program and returns everything back to normal. 
So that's all for the general logic part of this tutorial. The next thing I will talk about is making and using functions. So if you click on the functions menu, you, uh, you have three very powerful commands available to you. We'll start with the second one. So this is the run task command. The way that this command works is it will open up another task file and run it inside of the currently running task until the end program command is run inside of that task and it will go back to the original task. Think of it like running a function. The next command I'll show you is the run python code command. So this is, I think, the most powerful function that you can use in this entire program and I expect um, higher level users to be using this the most. Essentially, this runs Python code, and Yorm Creator Studio is packaged with the entire Python 3.4.4 interpreter. And so that means you have every library available to you, including um, you know HTTP libraries. You could make a web server inside of here. I've done it. I've uh, controlled the Yorm through my web browser, running Yorm Creator Studio to host the server. And the, the benefit of this is that if you make programs inside of here, then you can share it with other people who have Yorm Creator Studio and they don't have to set up the environment and set up Python and set up OpenCV. They can just run whatever program you use. So I recommend if you're going to be programming in Python, do it inside of Yorm Creator Studio um, so that everyone can benefit from your projects. And if you're going to be using this command, I, you already have to know Python, but I want to show you the documentation. So you can click here and there's a whole lot of documentation right here with links to GitHub pages to find out more. And if you click on the bottom of the command on user manual, you can look through every single command and the documentation for that command and it will show you how to run that inside of the interpreter. So this is a pretty powerful command. The final command I'll be showing you is the run function command. Uh, this is the most powerful command for beginners, I think. So you can click and drag it in, and you'll notice that it's telling me I haven't created any functions yet. So that's the first step. Click on resources, and then click new function. So in here, this looks kind of familiar, right? You can create a, a function by using other visual programming language, uh, like blocks of code. So the, the first step is to name your function. So we're going to create a function that has the robot beep three times. It's important to have a good description so that later on you can go back and see your functions and understand what they were supposed to do. So in order to have the robot beep three times, we'll use a while loop and the count method. So if count is less than three, and we'll create count here, and we will increment it here. And we will beep and wait half a second between beeps. So you press apply when you're done with your function, and you'll notice that it pops up right here under functions. You can see a little bit about it, the name, the description, how many commands are in it, and you can go back and click edit function to open it up again. So let's go back to the main, the main menu and you can double click run function and now you can see that beep has appeared. So if we run this, the robot will beep three times. Let's try that out. So there you go, but there's more to functions. So go to resources and let's edit that function. What if we want it to beep a certain amount of times? and that will change every time you use it. So that's where arguments come in. Arguments are similar to other programming languages where a function takes something in and does something relating to those arguments. So click the plus button, and here you have to create a, a valid Python variable name, and it'll tell you if it's not a valid, valid name. So we will say beep count. This is how many beeps there will be. And we can say how much time between beeps. The arguments that you input into the function can be used as if they're variables that have already been created. So here under the while loop, we'll test if count is less than 
the beep count. And then under the time to wait, we'll put, instead of 0.5 seconds, we'll put time between beeps. Now press apply and close resources. Go back to the beep uh, command. You'll notice that there's uh, two arguments now that need to be filled, the beep count and the time between beeps. So put in a beep count of say five and we'll make the time between beeps be 0 0.1 seconds instead of 0.5 and run it. And there you go, five beeps with very little time in between. So that's it for the logic tutorial. And I hope I see some cool projects out there. I'm really hoping that people will start sharing their task files with other people and we'll have a flourishing community of VUARM uh, owners and maybe other robot arms in the future.